Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my starting 11 prediction for our game against Newcastle. So in goal, I'm going to go with David De Gea. I think we should go with Dean Henderson. I think Dean Henderson needs a run in goal. Uh, Solskjaer recently admitted that it's becoming more and more difficult to leave Dean Henderson out of the side. Dean Henderson will be our number one at some point because I think he's reliable enough now to become our number one because he has got that experience behind him. He endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. Before the start of this season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract. Uh, but David De Gea, he'll remain our number one for at least this season. Uh, to David De Gea's credit, he did well in our last league game against West Brom. Made a couple of good saves. David De Gea got criticised a lot after our 3-3 draw with Everton because he made two mistakes in that one. Effectively, he cost us that game. In the last couple of years now, David De Gea has made calamitous mistakes. And reflecting on that, he's become a liability. A few years ago, he was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. This is his 10th season at Manchester United, so he has been a long servant. He has been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. But you know, Jamie Carragher's recently come out and said we need to drop David De Gea. Uh, Gary Neville recently said Solskjaer must deal with the goalkeeper situation. But yeah, I think it will be David De Gea in goal. <laughs> uh, right back, I'm going to go with Anwan Basaka. I think Anwan Basaka's really, really improved. There's been some games this season where he's got into very good positions, got forward well, put good crosses into the box. Defensively, Anwan Basaka has always been superb. You know, this is his second full season. At Manchester United. The two centre-halves, I'm going to go with Victor Lindelof and Harry Maguire. I think Victor Lindelof needs to stay out of the team, but I think he's going to start this one. I've got strong reservations about Victor Lindelof. Harry Maguire... I think he's had good games this season. He's also had bad games. I thought he did well against Real Sociedad. Um, he also did well against West Brom. Got forward well from that left-hand side. Harry Maguire, though, still wasn't worth the £80 million that we got him for. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. And he's... The second most expensive signing at the club, just behind Paul Pogba. At left back, I'm going to go with Luke Shaw. Uh, Luke Shaw didn't play against Real Sociedad, he was rested. Luke Shaw still remains our first choice left back, despite the arrival of Alex Tellez last summer. But Luke Shaw's really, really improved. You know, Luke Shaw's getting forward well. He's creating chances for his teammates. He's getting in good positions. And defensively, Luke Shaw's been very, very good. I think Luke Shaw's had a good career at Manchester United, apart from the injuries that he's had. He's been at the club now over six years. In the midfield, I'm going to go with Fred and Matic. Fred did very, very well uh, recently against Real Sociedad. He got an assist in that game. Um, I like the way Fred passes the ball. His passing's really, really improved. He's getting forward well and sometimes he breaks up the play well. Fred has been at the club now a few years. We got Fred in a deal worth £52 million from Shatter Donetsk. And I've got to say, 
Fred was a world-class player during his time in Ukraine. Fred did get criticised a lot under the Jose Mourinho era. But reflecting now how good he's been under Ole, he's confounded his critics wrong. Fred never really got his opportunities under Mourinho. Uh, Matic, you know, obviously he isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but he still gets his chances. And I've always had my reservations about Matic because Matic has, Matic has always been a slow player. And plus now, obviously, he's in his 30s. He's had some good games, though, at Man United. Matic has been at the club now almost four years. We got him in a deal worth £40 million pounds from Chelsea back in 2017. <laughs> Ahead of them two, I'm going to go with Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Bruno Fernandes did very, very well recently against Real Sociedad. He got a brace in the game. Bruno Fernandes is our best player and is the best signing we have made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. In most of Bruno Fernandes' games at Manchester United, he has been very, very consistent. But there has been a few games where he has looked off the pace. Fernandes weren't that good in our last league game against West Brom, apart from the fantastic volley he scored. Uh, Bruno Fernandes did say on his 12-month anniversary that he's planning on spending many years at Manchester United. and He's won Player of the Month now quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford did well recently against Real Sociedad, got his name on the score sheet and got an assist, but should have had more than one goal because he wasted around three or four good chances. Uh, Rashford started centrally against Real Sociedad, but like I've said before, I think he's more effective out wide on the left. He's much better on the left than he is on the right. Obviously, Rashford's endured bad periods as a Man United player, but he has been part of the club for several years. He's been a United player since the age of seven. And he's been in our senior squad since 2016. On the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Mason Greenwood. Um, I think Mason Greenwood's done very, very well recently, despite scoring. I think he's done good though since he broke into our senior squad. This is Greenwood's second season in the senior squad. Uh, don't forget Greenwood recently signed a new four-year contract with Manchester United. That keeps him under contract with the club until 2025. There's an option to extend for a further year. Greenwood has made like 83 first-team appearances for us. And he's been at United since the age of seven. He's definitely the foreseeable future for us. Ollie's been defending him a lot this season. Um, earlier on this season, didn't, re didn't really have much of a perception on Greenwood because obviously he had personal issues at one point. At one point he had injury and at one point he was out with illness. Uh, the start of this season, by the way, we give Greenwood that number 11 shirt. And um, up top, I'm going to go with Edison Cavani. Uh, Solskjaer did say in his press conference that uh, Cavani is likely to be available for this one. Cavani missed the game against Real Sociedad because obviously he had a muscle injury. But yeah, like I say, he's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. I like the way Edison Cavani holds up the play. His movement in and out of the box is good. He creates chances and he also scores goals. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer says Edison Cavani is set for contract extension talks. Because uh, Cavani recently said 
that he wants to stay at Manchester United beyond this season. We have yet to trigger that one-year extension on his contract. Cavani's into the final four months of his current contract. We got him on a free transfer last summer on deadline day. Signed a one-year contract on Man United with an option of a second year. So that's how I think we could line up against Newcastle on Sunday night. Uh, as you all know, Solskjaer did confirm in his press conference that uh, Paul Pob is obviously still out. Uh, Phil Jones remains out. Um, but he did say, though, of in regards to Donny van der Beek, that he should be available. Uh, Donny van der Beek has been out with a muscle injury. Uh, Solskjaer's not sure about Scott McTominway because I think he sustained an injury in our 4 0 win against Real Sociedad. Uh, Paul Pogba, he's out for the rest of February. Uh, Solskjaer confirmed that prior to the game against Real Sociedad. He should be back early March, Paul Pogba. He has got a thigh injury. Um, Paul Pogba's performances in recent months have been very, very good. He's been enduring the best period of his career at Man United since he rejoined. Earlier on this season, Pob had an ankle injury. He was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. So, sustained a few injuries now at Manchester United. <clears throat> like I said, there's still a chance that Paul Pogba will leave the football club in the summer. He has had a long-running transfer saga. Uh, Minio Riola, Paul Pobba's agent, is desperate to get his client out of the football club this summer. Minio Riola recently admitted he's working quietly on Paul Pobba's transfer to avoid offence. Because Minio Riola's been criticised before and he doesn't have a good relationship with Man United. He made an announcement back in December regarding Paul Popper and Solskjaer was not happy with Minio Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against Leipzig in the Champions League. There's three clubs that want Paul Popper, that's Real Madrid, Juventus and PSG. We've revealed our asking price for Paul Popper, we want £100 million. Pounds. I'm very, very sceptical we'll get £100 million. Pounds. It did say uh, last month though that Paul Pogba was considering making a U-turn at the club and he contradicted his agent Minio Riola for the second time. Um, it said the other week that we'd held talks with Paul Pogba over his future and Solskjaer came out and said that Pogba's happy and Solskjaer suggested that Paul Pogba could sign a new contract. Pogba's our most expensive sign at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. You know, earlier on this season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract with the club until June 2022. And uh, Phil Jones, he doesn't get in our 11, does he? Um, I'm expecting Phil Jones to leave this year, to be honest with you. I'm actually surprised that he didn't leave in January, but Solskjaer came out and said that Phil Jones... He's going to be given a second chance. He's been out of injury now for over a year. This is Phil Jones' 10th season at Manchester United. He's the only outfield player that's still here since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Jones actually did have an operation. And uh, Donny van der Beek, uh, like I've said so many times... He needs to get more opportunities at Manchester United because he's played nowhere near as much as I expected. Most of Donny van der Beek's appearances have come from the bench. He's only started two games in the league this season. Uh, as you all know, Solskjaer's already promised Donny van der Beek more game time at the club. Um, he made an admission earlier on this season. I think it was prior to the Liverpool game in the cup and said that Donny van der Beek is unhappy at Man United with his lack of game time. 
You know, he's a good player. He's done well in the games he's played in. You know, Van der Beek can play in three different roles. And we got him in a deal worth £40 million. We paid £35 million up front and there was £5 million in add-ons. Van der Beek's got a contract with the club until 2025. Uh, by the way, like I updated during my last video, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer re refuses to admit defeat to City in the title race. So basically Solskjaer saying the title is not over. He said after our 1-1 draw with West Brom that we are still in the title race and will not settle for second in the title race. I've totally disregarded the title, and a lot of Manchester United fans have, maybe some Man United fans haven't disregarded the title, you know, Manchester City are 10 points in front of us, so they are the champions elect. Uh, don't forget Solskjaer did say after our 3-3 draw with Everton that we shouldn't be considered as title chasers, so, you know, he made a different admission after the Everton game to the one he made after the West Brom game. I think we'll win another title at some point, but I don't know when. You know, we haven't won the Premier League title since 2013. But like I say, we've got to get back to winning ways in the Premier League. We've only won one of our last five Premier League games. You know, drop points against West Brom and we should have beaten West Brom. We uh, dropped points against Everton, should have definitely beaten Everton because we was leading twice in that game and we squandered a two-goal lead. Uh, we should have certainly beat Sheffield. We lost to them 2-1 at home. Uh, we should have beaten Arsenal at the Emirates because we had our chances, you know, to win that game. Uh, drew with Liverpool as well. But we've got a lot of confidence going into this game against uh, Newcastle because we recently had a very, very good win against Real Sociedad, beating them 4-0 in the Europa League round of 32 first leg. I wasn't expecting that to be honest with you. Good result and good performance. Basically, we are into the next round of the Europa League. Uh, by the way, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has said that Ahmad Dilo Traore could make his first start for Man United next week in the second leg against Real Sociedad at Old Trafford. It was good to see Ahmad Dilo Traore come on and make his first team debut. Um, showed his tricks in that. And I said he's good. He's, he will be a good asset for the first team because uh, Ahmad Dilo Traore had had been doing very very well for the under twenty threes. Uh, Newcastle are a very very poor team. You know they're sitting seventeenth in the Premier League. Uh, Newcastle are facing a relegation battle. Uh, Newcastle's last win at Old Trafford was back in 2013. Um, it was a goal from Kabai. Uh, we did beat Newcastle in this fixture last season at Old Trafford 4-1. And we're beating them at St James's Park earlier on this season 4-1. Newcastle's current manager is Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce has been Newcastle manager now for like 19 months. Uh, Newcastle actually appointed Steve Bruce in, in July 2019. To be honest with you, I'm still surpri surprised Steve Bruce is still there because he's a very, very poor manager. Uh, don't forget at one point Newcastle did have Rafa Benitez. I think they should have actually kept Rafa Benitez, but don't forget Rafa Benitez did resign. Uh, Newcastle have got some good players in their team. Um, obviously, they've got Maximin, who I rate a lot. They've got Joe Linton. They've got Dwight Gale. They've got Andy Carroll. Uh, they've got that Callum Wilson. Now, he's a big miss for Newcastle because he's out with injury. Uh, Steve Bruce obviously brought Callum Wilson in. But... 
They've also got that Fernandez. He's out with injury. Uh, they've got Sean Longstaff and Matty Longstaff. Uh, they've got Matt Ritchie. They've got John Joe Shelby. Uh, they've got Kieran Clark. Uh, they've got Jamal Lewis. Uh, Steve Bruce brought him in. They've got Ryan Fraser. Steve Bruce brought him in. They've got Jeff Henrik. Steve Bruce also brought him in. And they've got that Joseph Wilcock, I think, on loan. And Newcastle have got a pretty good goalkeeper in Carl Darlow. Um, he's their first choice goalkeeper. I thought Kabai, though, was a good player for Newcastle when they had him. And I thought Yedlin was also a good player for Newcastle when they had him. But yeah, like I say, we should be winning this game. Top four is now our aim this season. And I can almost assure that we are going to finish in the top four. I'd be very, very surprised if we finished out of the top four. After Newcastle in the league, it's Chelsea. That's going to be a tough test. And then after Chelsea, it's Manchester City. And that's going to be a very, very hard game. But yeah, um, I am Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in. Because I think, you know, he's made very, very good progress at Manchester United. You know, there has been some games in that where Solskjaer has got best, where he's got the best out of the team. Uh, in recent months, we've seen performances improve. Uh, players are improving as well. Uh, we've got a fantastic away record in the Premier League. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. We're unbeaten in our last nine away games in all competitions. You know, we've been far better away from home than we have been at home. We've won a few games now at Old Trafford this season, but all our defeats have actually come at Old Trafford this season. You know, Solskjaer, you know, he deserves credit. Got us to the He's got us to the FA Cup quarterfinals. Um, he's got us to the Europa League last 16. Uh, got us to the EFL Cup semi-final this season. Lost 2-0 to Man City. You know, Solskjaer did well last season in his first full season at the club. Guided us to three semi-finals, got us third place and got us qualification for the Champions League. Also went on the 19-game unbeaten running all competitions last season. We was 14 unbeaten in the Premier League. And yeah, um, we have... Enjoyed bad periods on Dolly. You know, we haven't done well in the league recently. Uh, we was par at the first part of this season. I've got to say, Solskjaer was looking not to be sat earlier on in the season. And the first part of last season, we was uh, very, very poor. We enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. But even the greatest managers do enjoy bad periods. For example, you know, Liverpool have been enjoying a bad period. Uh, but they did have a good win recently against RB Leipzig. Uh, but there has been Man United fans demanding Ole out. And Solskjaer has been criticised a lot as Manchester United manager. I think uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to win a trophy to avoid the sack. And... Um, you know, like I've said, the FA Cup's a chance of a trophy and the Europa League is a chance of a trophy. We haven't won a trophy since 2017 and a club of our stature need to be winning trophies. You know, this is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's third season and his second full season. He's going to be given at least another season at the football club. He's been Man United manager now over two years. And reflecting now on his being at the football club, he's gained some managerial experience and he's learnt quite a bit on the job. Uh, Solskjaer's managed over 100 games as Man United manager in all competitions. You know, we appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. 
um, in Solskjaer's first three months as man first three months as Man United manager. Um, he was the interim manager. Did very very well as the interim manager. So the club decided to give him the job permanently in March twenty nineteen. This year's summer transfer window is very, very important for Manchester United and this year's summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's biggest transfer window in his managerial career because we do need to make more signings. You know, Solskjaer wants three summer signings like I updated you this morning. He wants a forward a right winner and a centre half and he's set to sit down with Ed Woodward to have talks uh, regarding our business in the next couple of weeks. And the board must back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the summer transfer window because I think the transfer windows Solskjaer's enjoyed so far, he has not been backed enough as Man United manager. And Woodward and that's come out several times to show his support for Ole and he did say towards the end of last year he will back in with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. But the board's been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years. Uh, apparently, we're prepared to smash our transfer record in the summer. You know, it actually may go on the centre half. And apparently, Woodward's set to hand Dolly Gunnar Solskjaer a huge war chest. To be honest with you, I think we'll give Solskjaer a new contract. I think he deserves a new contract reflecting how good he's done and how he's turned Man United around. Now, Solskjaer recently admitted that no one spoke to him um, over a new contract. It said the other week, we will begin contract talks with Solskjaer at the end of this season. And it says we could offer him a new two-year deal. On one condition, that's if we qualify for the Champions League, which I think we will. Solskjaer is into the final 18 months of his current contract. Um, don't forget, you know, Solskjaer is inheriting players from other managerial eras. Uh, but to be honest with you, uh, Solskjaer has got rid of a lot of the deadwood now. And he's brought some good players in, you know, he's spent over £200 million at the club, but so far he hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend in. And I do also like the way that Solskjaer has promoted the youth, because, you know, he's given the young players their chances and he's brought more young players into the club. Um, I think there's been some news, by the way, uh, regarding a director of football. I may give you an update on that on the next video I do. Uh, more videos will be coming up tomorrow on you know, this channel. <clears throat> but anyway, you know the players that we're in for. You know, we want that Jules Conde from Sevilla. He's our top target. You know, we still want Sancho in the summer. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still wants Erling Haaland. Uh, I think I've been hearing rumours about Kingsley Coman recently as well. Uh, I give you the news recently, didn't I, regarding Harry Kane. So, yeah. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.